Hello and welcome to Rando Tech Info. So today we're talking about the big news that came out in the smartphone industry this week. No, I'm not talking about the $2,000 folding monstrosity from Samsung. I'm talking about the sub $350 phone from ZTE. The phone I'm talking about is the Axon 25G. It has a 6.9 inch full HD plus OLED 90 Hertz display. But what makes this phone truly special is the fact that this display has no hole punch, no cutout, and no mechanical selfie, flip, or pop-up camera. So how are they doing it? Under screen technology. Yes, ZTE has finally produced the first mass-produced smartphone with an under screen selfie camera. And the early hands-on videos coming out of China make it seem like the technology works pretty darn good. In my view, this is a really big deal. And the reason is, is because this under screen selfie technology, this full screen tech is going to be where the battleground on smartphones next year is fought. For a while, it was bezels trying to get the bezels shrunk down to as small as possible. Then more recently, it's been about refresh rate and that 90 Hertz and 120 Hertz refresh rates that uh, phone companies have been putting in their screens. Now it's going to be about that full screen experience without needing that mechanical solution to get there. Companies like Samsung and Huawei would have you believe that the future of smartphone tech is folding technology, that foldable phones are the next big thing. I don't think so. I'm not sure foldable phones will take off and even if they do, they're so expensive right now, I don't think they will be adopted by the masses for quite some time. But this full screen technology that's what you're going to see start popping up from most of the major phone manufacturers next year. And it's pretty impressive that ZTE was the first company to really seem to be able to pull this off. Now, the other specs on this phone are actually pretty impressive as well, considering the price point. Yes, it's a mid-range phone, but it has upper tier mid-range specs, even though it has a lower tier mid-range price. It has a quad camera setup with a 64 megapixel primary lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and then two 2 megapixel lenses, one for depth and a macro lens. It also records video in 4K at 60 frames per second, so not a slouch in that area for sure. It runs on the Snapdragon 765G processor and has a 4,220 milliamp hour battery with 30 watt fast charging. Other specs are what you would expect. It's 6 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage in the base model, and it does have micro SD expansion. There's no IP rating or headphone jack, but once again, for the $322 price point, I don't think too many people are going to complain. So, pretty good specs. Check. Cool new technology. Check. Will it work here in the US? That's a little bit trickier to answer. Before I answer that though, just know that this phone will not be sold here in the US. ZTE as of right now has no plans to bring the phone here. So you'll need to bring it over with a third party seller. And if you do that, make sure you choose somebody reputable and also be aware it will probably void the warranty. So as always, I got my little cheat sheet over here. So let me tell you how this phone is going to work on the different carriers. So on Verizon, uh, you're a no-go. It only uses two out of five of Verizon's 4G bands. You won't get any 5G and it does not use their primary band, band 13. So you're not going to want to get it for Verizon. AT&T is a little bit harder to say. So it only uses four out of nine of AT&T's 4G frequency bands, but it does use their two primary frequency bands, bands 12 and 17. So depending on where you live, you may actually get decent service on AT&T. I would not take this phone cross country uh, and expect to get good service the entire time, but you might get okay service where you live. You will not get 5G, however. Now, T-Mobile is interesting as well. It only uses three out of six of their 4G frequency bands, but it does use two out of three of their primary frequency bands. And on T-Mobile, it uses band 41 on 5G. So you should get 5G coverage with T-Mobile, at least in places where their 5G mid-band coverage is available. So if you're on AT&T or T-Mobile, should you get this phone? Obviously, that's a decision you have to make. The coverage may be okay, it probably won't be great, but here's the thing. This phone is only around 320 USD. That's a pretty good deal. I almost love the opinion, if you've got the money laying around, go ahead and get it. Give it a shot. Be the first of your friend group to say, hey, I have a phone with a full screen and no pop-up camera, no mechanical camera on the front. 
it's definitely really cool. The phone is a really good value. Just last week, I did a Will It Work video about the Asus Zenfone 7 Pro. And in that one, I said the coverage might be spotty, and I didn't recommend bringing it over, but that phone was $950. This phone is so much cheaper, I feel like it's more worth rolling the dice just to see. And if it doesn't work, well, you get yourself a nice almost seven inch tablet to use around the house on your Wi-Fi. Well, those are all my thoughts and all the information I have today about the ZTE Axon 25G. What are your thoughts about this phone? And what are your thoughts about underscreen cameras in general? Do you think this is the future of smartphone tech? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info signing out.